In this video, we're going to discuss what warts are, what causes them, and cover a range of different treatment options, including things that you can try at home to try get rid of them, as well as prevent them, and when you might need to go see a doctor about your warts. So what are warts? Well, warts are localized thickenings of the skin, and the term plantar warts is used for those that occur on the soles of the feet, but they can occur anywhere, including the hands. They're also known as verrucas. So what causes warts? Well, warts are caused by an infection in the outer layer of the skin. This is the epidermis, and it's caused by the virus called the human papillomavirus, or HPV for short. There are over 150 strains of the virus, and the common wart is usually due to just a few of these strains. Infection makes the skin overgrow and thicken, and this leads to a benign or non-cancerous skin growth, and this is the wart. Warts can be caught by direct contact with infected skin, so things like the floors of public changing rooms, shower cubicles, and the areas around swimming pools. They can also be spread by auto-inoculation. This is a fancy way of saying infecting yourself, and this happens when warts are transferred to surrounding skin through scratching and rubbing, so please try not to do this. So if you decide to go ahead with treatment, well, what options are available? Well, it's important to start off by saying that not treating a wart is a reasonable option. Up to 65% of warts resolve by themselves without any treatment within two years of appearing. So there's an argument to be made that if the wart isn't causing any symptoms and it's not painful, you could just leave it alone. Now, if you do decide to go ahead and treat it, then thankfully most warts can be managed with advice from your pharmacist and buying medicine over the counter without the need to see a doctor. Now, the first option is something like salicylic acid. These come in paints and gels, and these are available in different strengths, and they work by removing the outer dead layers of skin and triggering the immune system into clearing the virus. Before applying the paint or lacquer, you need to soak your feet in warm water and then try to file away the thickened skin with a pumice stone or emery board, but make sure that you don't scrape the surrounding normal skin to try and avoid spreading the virus. Now you should apply the lacquer once a day for at least 12 weeks, and it's usually most convenient to do this at bedtime. Try to make sure that you avoid the normal surrounding skin if you can, and cover the lesion with a dressing to allow the treatment to work effectively. If the wart becomes too sore, stop applying the paint for a few days, and then you can start again. Now the next option is something called cryotherapy. This involves freezing the warts with liquid nitrogen, which is basically a very cold gas. There are some over-the-counter options that you can buy to try to do this at home from a pharmacy, or it might be a service that's available at your doctor's surgery or podiatrist. Now thick warts need to be shaved before freezing to allow the cold to get into the skin, and ideally cryotherapy should be repeated every three to four weeks. Now it can be painful and it may cause blisters and burns, and because of this it's not usually recommended in children. Several freezes might be needed to clear the warts, and it doesn't always work. Using a salicylic acid preparation in between the freezes may improve the effectiveness of this option. Now the third option is duct tape. Now there's some conflicting evidence about how effective duct tape is in treating warts, but it seems most effective in children. Now if this is the option you end up choosing, then the wart should be covered with duct tape for six days, and if the tape falls off, then just replace it with a fresh piece. The tape should then be removed and the affected area soaked in lukewarm water, and the wart pared down to remove any dead skin cells. You should then leave the wart uncovered overnight, and the duct tape should be reapplied once again in the morning, and this can be continued for up to two months. Now there are other options, such as silver nitrate caustic pencils, 5-fluorouracil, and bleomycin injections, but these are all more specialist options, and you'd need to see a doctor to discuss these. Finally, it is worth mentioning that rarely surgical removal of warts is an option if topical treatments don't work. So what can you do to try and prevent warts? Well, the first thing you can do is make sure you wear comfortable shoes and don't share your shoes or socks with anyone else. Secondly, keep your feet clean and dry and change your shoes and socks daily. Thirdly, don't go barefoot in public places and make sure that if you do have a wart on your foot, you cover your feet using special swimming socks or wear sandals. Fourthly, if you're treating a wart, make sure you dispose of any skin filings hygienically and don't use the hard skin removal tools on other bits of your body because like we've already discussed, this can cause auto-inoculation, which is spreading the infection inadvertently to other parts of your body. Fifth, if you're going to treat your wart, then apply the topical treatments regularly to get the maximum chance of cure. Finally, when should you see your doctor about a wart? Well, you should see the doctor if the lesion is bleeding, painful, or changes in appearance or interferes with your daily activities. 
Also see your doctor if you're not sure about the diagnosis, if you've treated the wart but it persists and starts spreading, or if you have diabetes or poor sensation on your feet. Finally, you may also need to see your doctor if you have a weakened immune system because of an immune suppressing medication that you might be taking, AIDS or immune deficiency disorder, then it's worthwhile speaking to your doctor. This brings us to the end of the video. Make sure you check out the links in the description box for lots more useful information on this topic. And if you did learn something new or you want to share your own experiences, please do so in the comment section. Could I also ask that if you enjoyed the video, you consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos. Until next time, thank you for watching and bye.